In a landmark decision that will be studied for generations, the United States Supreme Court has fundamentally changed the course of American trade policy, sending shockwaves through the nation's political and economic landscape. On August 8, 2025, the court overturned the sweeping tariffs imposed by former President Trump, dismantling a core part of his America First agenda and signaling a dramatic shift away from years of economic nationalism. For years, businesses and consumers struggled with the uncertainty of trade disputes and the burden of retaliatory measures from other countries. Many industries faced higher costs, supply chain disruptions, and shrinking export markets. Now, with the court's decision, the era of economic protectionism may be ending, opening the door to renewed global cooperation and opportunity. The tariffs, which targeted everything from Chinese electronics to European steel and even everyday consumer goods, had become a symbol of a divided approach to global trade. These measures marked a sharp break from decades of bipartisan support for free trade, upending long-standing alliances and economic strategies. The Supreme Court's ruling not only relieves immediate economic pain for many Americans, but also offers hope for a more stable and predictable business environment. More importantly, it redefines the limits of presidential authority over trade, reinforcing the system of checks and balances at the heart of American democracy. The case, VOS Selections, Inc. v. United States, United Unlikely Allies, Wine Importers, Steel Manufacturers and Other Affected Industries, who argued that the executive branch had overstepped its constitutional bounds. Their victory is a testament to the judiciary's enduring power to check executive action and protect the rule of law. The decision now forces a national conversation about the proper roles of Congress and the president in shaping economic policy and how best to represent the interests of American workers and businesses. The world's reaction has been swift and largely positive, with key trading partners welcoming the decision as a step toward repairing strained alliances and restoring trust in the global trading system. Yet, the ruling leaves a vacuum in U.S. trade strategy, raising urgent questions about what comes next. For years, tariffs were the main tool of economic diplomacy, shaping relationships and influencing negotiations around the world. Now, the Biden administration and Congress must work together to craft a new framework for global engagement, one that balances domestic interests, supports American jobs, and recognizes the realities of an interconnected world economy. The chapter of unilateral tariffs is closed. A new era of American trade policy begins, filled with both promise and uncertainty. The stakes are high, and the world is watching closely as the United States charts its next course. The next steps will define America's economic future for years to come, shaping not only the nation's prosperity, but also its role on the world stage. The legal battle began in the early days of Trump's trade wars, centered on his aggressive use of executive power to impose tariffs, sidestepping Congress's traditional role in shaping U.S. trade policy. This bold move sparked immediate controversy, as many questioned whether the president could act so unilaterally on matters with such sweeping economic impact. Businesses caught in the crossfire faced soaring costs and retaliatory tariffs from other countries, which threatened jobs and disrupted supply chains. Small business owners, manufacturers and farmers all felt the pressure, prompting a wave of urgent legal challenges as they sought relief from the sudden financial strain. The pivotal case, VOS Selections Inc. v. United States, argued that the president had exceeded the authority granted by Congress, especially under the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, or IEEPA. Plaintiffs contended that the law was never intended to give the executive such broad power over trade, especially in the absence of a true emergency. Plaintiffs claimed that economic competition alone didn't qualify as a national emergency and that allowing the president to act without clear limits set a dangerous precedent for future administrations. Lower courts struggled with these complex constitutional questions, weighing the need for swift executive action against the foundational principle of checks and balances. But the sheer scale of the tariffs and their impact on the economy forced judges to scrutinize the administration's claims more closely than ever before. Conflicting rulings from different courts made Supreme Court review inevitable, as the nation looked for a definitive answer to this unprecedented power struggle. By late 2024, the case had become a defining test of the balance of power between Congress and the president, drawing intense public and political scrutiny. 
Legal scholars, lawmakers, and citizens alike debated what was truly at stake. The business community, labor unions, and state governments all demanded clarity, fearing that uncertainty in trade policy could undermine economic stability and democratic accountability for years to come. The Supreme Court's decision would set a precedent for generations, shaping not only the future of trade policy, but also the limits of presidential authority in times of crisis. The stakes extended far beyond tariffs, reaching the very core of American governance and raising fundamental questions about who truly holds the power to shape the nation's destiny. At the heart of the dispute was IEPA, a 1977 law granting the president power to regulate economic transactions during a national emergency. Historically, IEPA targeted foreign threats, not broad protectionist measures. The Trump administration's use of IEPA to justify sweeping tariffs was unprecedented and controversial. Critics argued this interpretation let presidents bypass Congress, undermining its constitutional authority over trade. The Supreme Court had to decide, is IEPA a targeted tool for crises or a blank check for executive action? Their ruling reined in the president's power, restoring Congress's central role in trade. The era of manufactured economic emergencies is over. The Supreme Court's 6-3 decision was a clear rebuke of executive overreach. Chief Justice Roberts wrote that economic competition alone doesn't meet IEPA's standard for an unusual and extraordinary threat. The court emphasized Congress intended IEPA for specific genuine emergencies, not as a backdoor for general tariffs. The majority required the executive to identify a specific articulable threat directly linked to emergency actions. Justice Gorsuch's concurrence stressed that allowing broad tariff powers would erode the separation of powers and violate the non-delegation doctrine. The dissent argued for deference to the president, but the majority prevailed. The ruling sets a precedent. The president's power in foreign affairs is not absolute, especially when it encroaches on Congress's authority. The decision reasserts the constitutional balance. Congress, not the president, holds the power to tax and regulate trade. The political fallout has been immediate, reshaping power dynamics in Washington. For President Biden, the ruling removes a major source of friction with allies, but limits executive leverage in trade. The White House must now build legislative consensus for its trade agenda. Congress, newly empowered, faces the challenge of crafting modern trade laws. Senate leaders call it a return of rightful authority to Congress. The Republican Party faces an internal reckoning, as the legal basis for the America First agenda is gone. Some may push for new laws granting tariff authority, others may seek new forms of economic nationalism. The judiciary's role as a check on executive power is now firmly established. The decision's impact will echo in future battles over executive authority. The balance of power has shifted, permanently. The end of Trump-era tariffs brings relief and optimism to many American businesses. Companies relying on global supply chains expect lower costs and more predictable planning. Consumers will likely see prices drop on everyday goods, easing inflation. However, industries once protected by tariffs like steel and aluminum now face renewed foreign competition and uncertainty. Some may call for new government support to survive. The ruling is also prompting a realignment of global supply chains. Companies must now decide whether to return to old suppliers or continue diversifying to manage risk. This strategic reassessment will shape global trade for years. The business landscape is changing. Fast. The Supreme Court's decision will be felt in homes and communities nationwide. For most families, lower prices on imported goods will stretch household budgets. For workers in industries once shielded by tariffs, the news brings anxiety and uncertainty. In the Midwest, factory jobs may again be threatened by foreign competition. Meanwhile, American farmers stand to benefit as retaliatory tariffs are lifted and export markets reopen. The ruling reignites debates about globalization, fairness, and who wins or loses from trade. The legal battle is over but the societal conversation is just beginning. Legal experts are calling the Supreme Court's decision a true landmark, especially for the principle of separation of powers in the United States. Many see it as a pivotal moment that could shape the balance between the branches of government for years to come. Professor Lawrence Tribe, a leading constitutional scholar, says the ruling reasserts Congress's authority over trade and the power of the purse, restoring a crucial check on executive action. He notes that this decision could set a precedent for future cases involving congressional oversight. Economists, including Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, predict the ruling will help ease inflation and potentially boost economic growth. 
However, they caution that some industries, especially those facing international competition, will need targeted support to adapt to the new policy landscape. Adam Posen of the Peterson Institute calls it a win for efficiency and purchasing power, suggesting that consumers could benefit from lower prices and more choices in the marketplace. Foreign policy analysts see this as a unique opportunity for the U.S. to repair strained alliances and take a leadership role in shaping global trade rules, potentially strengthening its influence on the world stage. Not everyone is celebrating, though. Labor groups warn that without new tools and protections, American jobs could remain vulnerable to unfair trade practices and workers may face increased uncertainty. The challenge now is to craft a policy that is both legally sound and strategically effective, balancing economic growth with protections for American workers and industries. The decision forces a more accountable, transparent, and deliberative process for trade policy, requiring lawmakers to engage in deeper debate and public scrutiny. The world is watching closely to see how the U.S. will respond, as the outcome could have ripple effects across global markets and international relations. The next chapter will require creativity, compromise, and a willingness from all sides to find common ground for the nation's future. The Supreme Court's decision closes a tumultuous chapter in American economic history. By ending broad unilateral tariffs, the justices have handed Congress a clear mandate to reclaim its constitutional authority over trade. The challenge now can lawmakers build a modern bipartisan trade policy that protects workers and competes globally? Without resorting to blunt instruments, the era of tariffs forced Americans to confront the real-world impact of trade policy. As the nation moves forward, the focus must be on sharing the benefits of trade and supporting those left behind. The court's decision is not an end, but a beginning, a chance to build a smarter, fairer trade system. The choices made now will shape America's role in the global economy for years to come. The conversation is just getting started.